Hey, everybody. Um, yeah, oh, there it is. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Ian McRae, and I'm here from the Canadian Federation of Students. And so that is a national organization of college and university students that represents about 650,000 members. There, is, there are provincial components, and so myself and some other folks in the room who are taking pictures of me right now are, are from the, uh, the CFS Ontario office. I first met uh, Lucille and Linda uh, a number of years ago at a conference that the CFS organized, which was called Spirit of the North, where student unions from across northern Ontario came together <coughs> to talk about uh, northern issues and heard presentations, and we heard a presentation about passenger rail service, and it certainly stuck with me, and I'm excited to see the development that's taken place over the past few years. When I was thinking about how to um, draw the connection between the student experience and uh, passenger, passenger rail service, I um, thought maybe to take a look at how, well, at the formation of, uh, of post-secondary education in, in the North. So uh, during the 1960s, under the conservative government at the time and Minister of University Affairs, Bill Davis, who you can see there enjoying a cigar, there, were, there was a historic investment in colleges and universities. So in the span of one government's budget, there was an increase in spending on education by over 450%. Now this had a lot to do with Canada's competitiveness with the United States at the time in the sense of the proportion of our population that was attending college or university um, and, and the very number of seats or institutions that were available to go to. And so um, most colleges and universities in this province were created uh, during this decade. And it's certainly true in Northern Ontario. So you can see there listed um, 10 different colleges and universities. There's also Collège Boreal today, which um, if I'm not mistaken came about in the 90s. But um, in any case, next slide. What we have here is a map of uh, Ontario with passenger rail service lines in black and this is a map in, of 1962 and the college or the, the stars on the map represent uh, colleges, universities or, or communities with both and so the red stars are uh, communities with both, the blue stars are universities and the yellow stars are colleges. Um, University to Hearst is not up there, and it came about a decade later. But as you can see, um, these institutions are connected with the rest of the province by a passenger rail network. If you flip to the next slide, um, this shows a map of 2012, and the, again, passenger rail lines are illustrated in black, and you can see the, the, the major gaps in, in that network. Um, it's, I should note also at this time that there are many other satellite campuses or access centers uh, throughout the region which are not shown by stars on the map because of their size. Um, Northern College alone has about 9,000 part-time and continuing education students um, which are spread across uh, you know, distant communities. Today there are about uh, 65,000 students studying in Northern Ontario. And um, unfortunately, there, I couldn't find any data to indicate how many of those students have moved to the region from other parts of the province or how many are moving uh, between communities in the North. However, what um, we can say for sure is that as education is becoming increasingly important, um, in our society for folks seeking job opportunities, enrollment has increased dramatically as has the need for um, effective transit and diverse transit options. Uh, skip to the next one and then we'll go back actually. Maybe that's, um, again, the, the picture on the right, as you can tell, is the proposed rail loop that uh, Niorn is talking about. And with the stars um, shown, um, with the exception of Lakehead University and Thunder Bay, institutions in the north um, are really reflected 
by this network. And so what does this mean for students? Of course, it means safer and reliable um, transit options. It means uh, financial savings. As many of you will know, as um, education or post-secondary education has become increasingly important, it has also become increasingly expensive. And um, at the Canadian Federation of Students, we advocate for a system of education that is universal and free of all sorts of barriers, but in particular financial barriers. Um, however, we also recognize that strong public support for public services, like transit, um, help create the conditions for students to be successful. And so accessibility um, requires a holistic view. Um, sorry, go back. Um, of course, improved marketability of northern institutions and making the north a, a desirable destination for, for people to move to, and um, increased connectivity with First Nations communities who, um, are, of course, have growing populations, and we want to support uh, young Indigenous students as they uh, seek to attend college or university. Um, sorry, back to, there we go. And, uh, and, and looking forward, um, what is the future of post-secondary education in the North? What we can expect to see, certainly over 5, 10, 15 years, is institutions become increasingly specialized in terms of the types of programs they offer, whether that is uh, forestry or business or medicine and, and other programs at institutions to sort of um, be pushed aside as they, they narrow their focus. And this is what the government uh, is wanting to see. And within that uh, new system, we can expect to see an increased rate of students who transfer between institutions during their educational career. And whether that could mean from college to university, or university to university to grad school, or an, any sort of combination of these things. Um, again, it really underlines the, the importance of having uh, diverse transit options such as rail. And of course, interna international student enrollment um, is in increasingly becoming a pillar of uh, post-secondary education in this province. At Laurentian University alone, there are about 900 international students. At Algoma University, I think there's about 300 students studying at that university from other countries. Um, and so this really all paints a picture of a, a large population of students, many of whom rely on public transit services, who um, should be considered stakeholders in this, uh, in this movement. Uh, I, I suppose I'll end by um, bringing your attention to this document, which was created by the um, Canadian Federation of Students Northern Caucus, and it's called Endless Opportunity, and it's a, a policy paper that essentially outlines a number of recommendations to make education more accessible, um, particularly in the north. Uh, and, and investing in passenger rail service is one of the recommendations that's outlined there. I've brought a number of these. Yeah. So I, I've brought a, a number of these, uh, these books, and, and they're on the, the table over there in French, and in, in French and in English. So you're welcome to pick one up. And, um, if, if there are any questions, I look forward to hearing them, and you can obviously uh, look us up online at CFS Ontario, and um, there's some other folks from our office over there. I'm unfortunately going to be leaving uh, fairly soon, but uh, again, thanks for, for this opportunity to share our perspective.